Hi everyone, it's Liesl. I am back to show you how I make my concertina pockets that I add to the inside of journal covers and that I also used when I made this Traveller's Notebook insert. I'm going to show you how I make this, what shall we call it, vertical, because it's going to go on the inside of a journal cover. A vertical pocket. This I call the horizontal pocket just to distinguish and I will have a quick talk about that at the end. So we are going to do something that looks similar to this one. Now I have a make-believe journal cover and we shall assume that this is the back cover and it is five by seven inches large which is just sort of a random journal size and when I make my pockets, I usually, and it depends, obviously there are no rules, but I usually end up making them about half an inch smaller on every side. So in total, this width will be an inch less than the width of the cover, and the height here will be an inch less than the, effectively, the width of the cover here. So when I decide on the size, I start by making a drawing. My cover is five by seven. And I know that my total pocket is going to be an inch in total less up and across. So I am going to have a pocket that is going to be four inches by six inches. So starting with my drawing, I know that, and if we open this, I will show you, there is the flap and what I call the bottom pocket. And these are not attached. They are two separate pieces of paper that I use. So it just reduces a bit of bulk and weight um, and it's just the way that I do it. So starting when I do my drawing, I first draw my bottom pocket. And full disclosure, I am not an artist. And drawing is definitely not my strong suit. This is not to scale. This is purely as a guideline. Um, and it works, it works well for me. I'm going to have a bottom pocket and I'm going to have a flap. Now, I think that for a cover this size, a one and a half inch flap, which will be about that size from there to there. It's quite a nice size. So this distance for my flap is going to be one and a half inches. I also know that I'm making my pocket six inches across because my cover is seven inches. So this distance is going to be six inches. For my flaps, my basic rule is double what I've decided to use and that is the piece that I need to make a flap. So I am doubling the flap. I double the one and a half. So to this I add another bit that is also one and a half. And that gives me a piece that is six inches across and three inches high, if I may call it that. So I need to cut a piece of cardstock that is three by six. So if I do that quickly, I want to trim it here so that I know it's all straight. There we go. And one, two, three, four, five, six. You know what they say, measure twice, cut once. Um, let me, let's get it on the line. So that's six across, and now I need it to be three inches wide. There. So that is my flap. Now I need to fold that in half. I find that scoring helps to keep the paper from splitting and some paper is more fragile than others. So I tend to score and I, I um, have a scoreboard here, so I'm going to use it. And I'm going to score, if you can see, 
at, let's see if I can zoom in a little bit for you, there we go, at one and a half, because that's how wide I wanted my, or how high I wanted my flap to be. I'm going to score at one and a half. And then I will fold it over and done. And I will probably want rounded corners. So I will round my corners. There. Right. So that's my flap, which looks like this. This will be the flap, and this is the part that will be attached. I can find my cover. It will be attached to the cover like that. Right. So you've got it. It'll be something like that. Right. So that's the flap. Now for the pocket. I know that my pocket, this bit across, is going to be six inches. So six inches. And I know that in total, from top to bottom, I need my pocket to be four inches. My flap is one and a half, which means that the bit that is going to show is going to be two and a half inches for this pocket, because two and a half and one and a half is four. But I do need a little bit, you can see here, good get the light, it's, it's been raining for days in Cape Town, we're all delighted about it because of the drought, but it does make for dark and gloomy days. Um, and my, these colors aren't very light either. You can see that there is an overlap here. I like to add about three quarters of an inch overlap, but it does vary, it's not a rule. Um, sometimes you might want to make it less, and here, on this pocket, it's about an inch. It was just the look that I liked. So it really is up to you, but generally with pockets like this that go on the inside of a journal cover, if I'm running them vertically like this, I make about a three quarter of an inch overlap. So. If it's four across, this is one and a half, this bit here is two and a half, I need to add three quarters of an inch to the two and a half bit to bring it up to where I want it to be. So two and a half plus three quarters of an inch is three and a quarter. So this height here will be three and a quarter inches. Right, so that is going to be this bit here. Now, it won't be a concertina file for, um, pocket without the concertina bits. So you can see one, two, but there's also the bit that's attached to the actual cover. So there are three little, I don't know, concertina leaves, what do you call them, um, that I need to add to this side. And three, one, two, and the one that's attached to the cover, three on this side. I make my little leaves half an inch each. So if I'm adding three, to this side and three to that side. I'm effectively adding one and a half inches to this side here and one and a half inches to this side here and then I am going to divide that into three to give me my three concertina leaves and this one as well. So this distance here is one and a half inches and this distance here is one and a half and each of these is half an inch. And I just need that knowledge for when I go to score just now. So now the total width of cardstock that I need to make the bottom pocket part is six inches plus one and a half and plus another one and a half, which is nine inches in total. So whatever the width of your pocket that you decide, if you're going to make a five inch pocket, you're still going to add three inches to the five because you need one and a half inches on this side and one and a half inches on that side. If it's a four inch pocket, it'll be four plus three, which is seven. So I've got nine inches, but this pocket needs to be attached to the cover at the bottom as well. So I need a little fold over, just as I did for the flap. I need a little fold, or shall I call it a fold under, for the pocket. So I add half an inch, and this is also just standard, I always you do that, it's the, these sizes here, and this half inch here, they are always 
standard for me. I always, those are just, no matter what the size of the pocket I'm making, I always add three half inches to the right, three half inches to the left for my little concertina leaves and half an inch at the bottom. And this half inch will include the little gusset that I add at the bottom to give the concertina pocket a bit more space. So what I need here then is this distance here is three and a quarter. I'm adding half. So in total here, I need a piece that is three and three quarters high if it's nine inches wide. So let's just cut that quickly. And again, I just need to, I find that cardstock isn't always completely plumb. So I always end up just cutting my edges a little bit. Tidy that up. Nine inches from there is here. And I'll just measure a second time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. My grade one teacher will be appalled to see that I'm counting with my fingers, but that just works. So there we go. Nine inches. There it is. Okay. Nine inches and it has to be three and three quarters high. So it's nine wide. So we are going to put that there. And measure three and three quarters. Sorry, watching people cut paper is a bit like watching paint dry, but I thought if I did it with you, it would be easier for me to explain my thought process. So there we go, and that's one, two, three, and three quarters. There we are. So that's it. Now, obviously, I have included that little bit there and that little bit there, and we will be cutting that off once I've done all the scoring, okay? Because we don't need that little block there, that little block there. Right, if I pull the scoreboard nearer, the first thing we need to do is we added half an inch, which is the standard amount that I always add to the bottom of my pocket. I added half an inch to my, I think I should zoom out again, there we go. I added half an inch to the bottom. So I need to, and I'm going to do it from here just so that you can follow the measurements more easily. So my hands are in a bit of a weird position, but just live with it, please. Um, I'm going to score at half an inch all the way down. There you go. So that I am left with three and a quarter inches, which will be the actual pocket from there to there. I also need to score a quarter of an inch for my little gusset. So at three, at, at three eighths of an inch, so one eighth away from the pocket, I'm going to score another line. And that is basically just one eighth of an inch, which is going to be my gusset. And if I hold it up, hopefully you can see it Oh, there we go, that's better. That is the half inch line, and that is one eighth away towards the outside, which is going to be my little gusset. Right. Now I need to make my concertina leaves. And as I said, standard for me, half an inch each, and there are three of them. I'm sorry, I kicked the tripod. Um, so, once again, working from the left, at half an inch, I'm going to score. And then half an inch in again, which is one inch. I need to score again. And then another in half an inch in, so a total of one, two, three half inches. I am going to score again. And that will make my three concertina leaves that go on the left of my pocket. Now I need to score the three on the right. I will just turn it over so that you can follow it more easily. And I will score at half an inch again, and then at one inch, that's my second half inch, and then at one and a half inches for my third little concertina leaf. Right, and that is all the scoring that needs to happen. Okay, 
Now I told you that I was going to have to do a little bit of cutting. I need to cut that little piece and that little piece away. And they are this bit here from there to there. So take my scissors. I will cut along the scoring line up to the second line and then again here like that. So now I've cut that bit away and I need to do it on this side as well. So on the inside scoring line all the way to the third concertina leaf line. There we go. And then in from the bottom. Right here. And there we have the base for our bottom pocket. Now, put this away. We need to fold the concertina leaves. The easiest way to do this so that you don't get confused is the most inside line has to go in because, and I'll do it on both sides so you can see, because that is your pocket. So your first fold, and that is one, two, three, four, five, six. That's the pocket, six inches wide. Right, now we need to turn it into a little bit of a concertina shape. So on the next score line, we will come out again. I'm sorry if I look a bit unhandy. I'm standing and doing this so that I can see that I remain in frame. So it's not quite the way I'd usually be doing it. And then the last bit obviously needs to be tucked in again. There we go. And then you just need to take your bone tool and make sure that you fold them nicely. There we go. So on this side, on the third line, most inside line, we went in. Then we need to go out again, and we're just making a zigzag, and then we go back in again. And again, use your bone tool, and just give it a good rub. Right, so there, you can see, is the beginning of your pocket. Now for the bottom. I usually fold on the first, on the most inside score line first, so open that up and let me see what I'm doing and fold. Right. Now I need to fold in again to create my gusset. Can you see the score line? There you can see the score line. Okay, so I need to fold in again. That can be tricky because it's such a small little piece. So what I do, and this is just a little trick that I've found works is I put my ruler down and I butt it up to the score line that I want to fold along. There. And let me see if I can zoom in a little bit. There we go. Right. There's the score line that I want to fold on, that second one there. So I am taking my ruler and I'm butting it up against that score line. And then I take my bone tool and I just lift it up a little bit to encourage it to fold like that. And then, if I do that now, there, I'm going to just give it a bit more of a fold so that I know that the fold is there. There is my little gusset. So you can see, there's the gusset. Perfect. Right. And all we're going to do is we are going to tuck these in on the inside. We zoom out again so you can see what I'm doing. There we go. Um, camera work is not my strong suit. Um, there it is, we'll tuck those in, that will go over, and there is our little pocket, which will go on the cover. Right. Now there are a few little things that you can do just to make it all work a little bit better. The first thing is, at the top you're going to be tucking things in, and these little corners, I find sometimes bits and pieces get stuck in them and they lift. So I tend to just round them. There we go. This is not uncommon, many people do it. It's a very practical thing to do. So there, slightly rounded at the top. And then at the bottom, this is a lot of bulk in here. 
So, and sometimes it doesn't fit completely and it sort of presses. So I just make a very shallow cut, not big at all. And I just trim, you can see, trim just a little piece off at the bottom. Just like that, see, hardly anything at all. Right, now I made these closures with eyelets but I find that it's not always very practical and to be honest if you will give me a moment I just want to fetch the book which isn't on my table but it is close by um, when I made this concertina signature which is in my Tsunami Rose design team project I use split pins and I, uh, brads and I actually think that's a much more practical method to follow. So how you do your closure is up to you but I will discuss how I do it. So before you start gluing you need to make the holes for your closure whether you're going to use eyelets or brads you need to punch a hole in the... I'm just going to eyeball it here today, but you can always measure it and be... There we go, that's the one. And then I will... Let's see if that's there. This goes over here. I want it to be roughly... Get that straight. Oops. I should be working with a pencil, but I have a pen handy, so it's a pen. It'll be roughly there. Now, that is too far for my crocodile, and I don't have one of those, I don't know, big bites or whatever you call them. And this also doesn't get there. So I have this really nice little tool, which has adjustable tips. And I take the largest one of those. Here we go, insert it, and then, now I just need to, okay, there we go, there's my little mark, and I just put it over it, press down a few times, and there we go, it does make a bit of a mark in my board, but my board's full of them, so it's okay, there, so now I have my two holes. The next thing I need to do is punch the circles for my closure. So in this case, I'm just going to use some of the offcuts from my from my workings, and there they are. And I'm punching four of them because what I do is the split pins or the brads, their little legs obviously show when you fold them over to the inside and what I like to do is to hide those workings and I'll show you here I just glue a little circle over which keeps it neat and tidy and also prevents it from chafing against anything that's in there and I do it for the little button pocket and for the flap so I need to just punch and I'm going to eyeball these. These are not going to be the ones I'm actually using so I will just eyeball them. Two of them need to be punched. There we go. And then you would ink them, decorate them. You could even uh, punch two smaller pieces of decorative paper and attach them to these and then punch your holes so that they are decorated. I just left mine plain because I quite like the look of the craft cardstock but it really is entirely up to you. So before you glue anything down you then would attach them with your split pins and I will do that. There we go. Just like that. And 
and before you make it too tight you need to attach some string so here is a piece of string and you go in under your little circle like that and you just make a normal double knot that's what I do anyway And you pull it nice and tight and the little extra bit the tail can be trimmed now or later but let me just do it now while I am here there we go right so there is your little thread and then you can go and really tighten the Brad's little legs and then take one of your circles and glue it down. I've got some repositionable tape here. I'm just going to see if it'll hold it just to give you an idea. Right there. It'll be glued down like that. Right. So that's the cover. Ah, oh, the little flap. Now, you will follow exactly the same procedure with your other brad. And you will first put it through the circle, then through the bottom pocket, open it up, and again, cover it with some you're not repositionable, I'm just using repositionable because I'm going to take all the support once I'm done because <laughs> I still need to decorate this. But there. And that also prevents anything that you want to tuck in there from getting stuck against the little legs from the brat. And then when you actually have your pocket in, it'll be like that. And you can wind your pep, your uh, thread around and trim it down to the length that you want it to be. So that really is your pocket. All that remains is to glue everything down. So if we take my make-believe book cover, the first thing I do is I glue the bottom pocket down. That way I can tuck my flap in there and there, keep my eye on what I mean, there. And from behind it looks like that. And it'll fold over and look very neat when it folds up open. Right, so first thing to do is to glue the bottom of the pocket down. Use my repositionable tape. And you can make little marks if you like. I'm just eyeballing it, to be honest. Go get it in frame so you can see what I'm doing. And I am placing it and then folding it open and using your bone tool, whichever glue you use, just give it a bit of a loving rub to make sure that it's sticking. Right, so that's that there. Now you need to add some glue to the bit that is going to go onto your uh, cover. So I'm just folding it in so I can get to it there. And here, that's it there, just fold this one in, add glue, and then fold the whole lot in like that, and put it, oops, I'm sorry, that was my head, and put it down. There you go. Right, now. 
I then also again use my bone tool and just give it a bit of a loving rub to make sure that it is glued up. So that is the bottom pocket. And no real special science required. You are going to, this is the front flap, this is the bit that needs to be attached. So you will add some glue again. the bit that needs to go down and hmm I've been a bit of a dimwit you need to do some measuring before you do that usually let's see am I going to be lucky enough that it actually goes in without me needing to trim no I'm not so you need to just take a smidge off and I cut to about halfway and we'll see whether that's enough I might have to trim again and a smidge there and See whether, and I'm trying to give you the best view with the light, whether it fits sufficiently. And that looks quite good. Let's look at the top. My thread's in the, oh, my thread is all over the place there. I'm going to glue it down at about there, like that. And then give a bit more of a rub there and now you can go in with your band tool again and just oh there we go sorry it has to go there and give it a loving rub so that it's glued down and there is your concertina pocket this is not difficult as long as you just follow the basic steps you can see there's your three quarter of an inch overlap so that when you close it and let's close it now see how it looks oh, sorry i need to get in under there the first few times that you try and get under the the little circle can be a bit of a challenge after that it gets easier there and i will then snip that off there and just tuck it in like that and that is your little pocket basically decide on your size decide how much of an overlap you want add your concertina little wings or leaves or whatever you call them three of them half an inch each so one and a half inch extra either side half an inch at the bottom score your little gusset at an eighth of an inch so that you just have and you can see here it just gives you so much more space at the bottom so things can go all the way down without it making that sort of really fat tummy and nothing going on at the bottom so that's it now I just said I would get back to what I call the horizontal pocket you can always, instead of doing a pocket that's going to lie like this, do one that's like this. And what I did here, let me just open it up for you. Oh, and the rain is coming down and the light is going. I'm sorry. I hope you can see what I'm doing. Um, when it's a deep pocket like this one, I tend to go a little bit lower. So my flap will be larger and actually didn't go quite as low as I could have um, I could quite easily have gone to here just so that if you've got something in there and you need to get to it if your pocket is too deep you kind of have to shake your book upside down um, it's just for practicality but again it is absolutely your choice um, and it looks quite cute in this format with a slightly larger flap so that's just why I did it and again all you do is you decide on the size you decide how large you want your flap to be you double the flap so that you've got the bit that you want to glue down then you decide you measure what's left you add to it whatever your overlap is going to be and that will be the height of your pocket and then you will add half an inch, half an inch, half an inch either side, so an extra one and a half to each side, and half an inch at the bottom with a little one eighth of an inch score for the gusset. And there is your pocket. Cutting away the little corners, as I showed you on the picture, cutting away the little corners at the bottom that you don't need, 
and there you go and just always remember and don't ask me how I know this always attach your closure before you glue your pockets down I tend to get really excited and oh my pocket is done my pocket is done and then everything's glued down and there is no closure disaster start again so um, if anything please remember that <laughs> Make your closure before you stick anything down and i hope that this has helped uh, if you have any questions or anything is unclear please ask in the comments below i will get back to you and i will try and explain as well as i can anything that you might um, have questions about and um, have fun there are very few rules with this apart from and even my rules you might decide that you want to make your little concertina flips um, less or you want to make them wider or you want to add more which you can also do instead of three you could make it five um, but have fun and once you've made one you'll see how easy it is and you will make more I promise they're also really great as um, April who is pink oddbird on on YouTube um, actually said to me they'll make really nice little uh, gifts to add to happy mail because you can fill them with all kinds of little things um, so yeah lots of things that you can do with them lots of fun um, so yes have fun and let me know how it's going and as I said any questions please pop them in the bottom in the comments and as always thanks for watching and until we speak again bye bye